Come with me to Psalm 119 and verse 4. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. So far in this mighty psalm, we have seen what the famous 19th century preacher Charles Spurgeon described as a double blessing in the first two verses. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord, and blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with the whole heart. When you are determined to be undefiled by sin, walking day by day in his law, when God is a living reality to you and you seek him wholeheartedly, you are blessed and blessed again. And something dramatic happens in your heart. In verse 3, they also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Not only are you blessed by God, it becomes instinctive in you to turn from sin and walk in God's ways, not those of the world. Now in verse 4, as if to emphasise the point, the psalmist reminds us that God has commanded us to keep his precepts or commandments diligently, that is, both carefully and enthusiastically. Of course, you may say, I can't do that without Christ or without the Holy Spirit. Then pray to be so in Christ and so filled with the Holy Spirit that you do it. Be sure the devil is diligent at trying to drive a wedge between you and the Lord to steal your blessing. So when temptation comes, just as diligently refuse it. Simply walk in his ways and keep his precepts. This verse, like all the first eight verses in Psalm 119, begins with the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the letter Aleph, which here begins the word Atal, the second person singular pronoun, translated in the King James Version as Thou. Thou is not a respectful address, it's one of familiarity, but my, what a respectful sentiment it leads into. Spurgeon said about this verse, God's precepts require careful obedience. There is no keeping them by accident. Some to give to God a careless service, a sort of hit or miss obedience, but the Lord has not commanded such service, nor will he accept it. His law demands the love of all our heart, soul, mind and strength, and a careless religion has none of these. We are also called to zealous obedience. We are to keep the precepts abundantly. He draws this parallel. As a man diligent in business arouses himself to do as much trade as he can, so must we be eager to serve the Lord as much as possible. Those who are diligent in business rise up early and sit up late and deny themselves much of comfort and repose. They are not soon tired, or if they are, they persevere even with aching brow and weary eye. So should we serve the Lord. Such service he demands and will be content with nothing less. And Spurgeon goes on. God has not commanded us to be diligent in making precepts, but in keeping them. Some bind yokes upon their own necks and make bonds and rules for others, but the wise course is to be satisfied with the rules of Holy Scripture and to strive to keep them all in all places towards all men and in all respects. Now, you might be concerned to avoid what you may think of as legalism. As Spurgeon has just pointed out, if by that you mean following man-made regulations, you could be right. But if you mean a close adherence to the moral laws which God has laid down in Scripture, that isn't legalism, that's just obedience. I want to reassure you that no one will ever be barred from heaven because he kept the laws of God too diligently. It's God's command to keep his precepts diligently and your responsibility to obey and make your double blessing secure.